any means necessary. Police, fire, and emergency medical services will be unavailable until the purge concludes. Blessed be our players and the Hornet Nation, a nation reborn. May God be with you all. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Alumni Stadium. Welcome back to Hornets football. The Delaware State University Hornets on Hall of Fame Day taking on the Spartans from Norfolk State University. Both teams come into this game 0-3. Hornets two games out of conference against the University of Delaware and a game against West Virginia and one game in conference. They lost to Hampton University before week four. That was the only game played in MEAC play. Hornets lost that one 28 to 13 on the road, but get an opportunity to get in the win column against the Norfolk State Spartans. Norfolk State comes in also 0-3, having lost 75 to 14 last week against the defending FCS national champion, James Madison Bulldogs. James Madison ranked number one this season following their national championship season and it was competitive early on they were down 16 to 7 about halfway through the second quarter before james madison turned it up to that level the champions do and ended up outscoring norfolk state 52 to 7 the rest of the way as you see the hornets making their way out onto the field and this is a young team and an inspired team uh, they feel very good following their performance last week against the West Virginia Mountaineers. They lost that one 59 to 16, but West Virginia started this season in the top 25 in FCS play. Uh, they lost on the road to Virginia Tech to open up their season and fell out of the top 25, but still a very impressive performance. The Hornets first forced three first half turnovers. They intercepted Will Greer three times. Will Greer, of course, a young man looking to make his way into the NFL draft at some point, and so the Hornets had that impressive showing. They also had an 81-yard touchdown by Nyfees West. Caught a pass from new freshman quarterback Jack McDaniels. And Jack McDaniels making himself very popular among Hornet fans. It's been a long time since a freshman has opened the season as the starting quarterback for the Hornets. But we've got one here tonight. Again, Jack McDaniels. He's connected on just under 50% of his passes this season. He's out of Lorton, Virginia. Do, does have two interceptions, but, but again, just a freshman trying to find his footing at this level of play, and he's got some help behind him as we get to our keys to the game. Number one field position. Fidel Romo Martinez, last week's MEAC Special Teams Player of the Week, is averaging 46 yards a punt. And he has been excellent this season. Field position going to be key. Give this Hornets offense good opportunities to score, put up points, and get them out in front. Number two, establish the run. Three very good running backs for the Hornets. Bryson Aline, Mike Waters, and the freshman Nyfees West. All very quality running backs out of the backfield, and the Hornets going to look to try and force feed them tonight. And the final one, just win, baby. It's been a long time since the Hornets picked up a win, the final game of the 2015 season when they upended Howard. So as Al Davis would say, just win, baby. No matter how you do it, no matter how it looks, no matter what the scoreboard says, you just want to get that first win in the win column. And this might be the Hornets' best opportunity this season. Norfolk State struggling this year. We will get to impact players in a moment. Hornets will get the ball first. Bryson Aline back to return. He's fifth in the MEAC this season in kick return yard average. So Bryson Aline, one of the running backs in the stalemate that Coach Carter has behind him. And he's going to get an opportunity 
to receive this kick. Bo Lomax, the kicker for Norfolk State, sends it away. Deep over the left sideline, and it will go out of bounds. So an illegal procedure. Penalty early for Norfolk State. Free kick out of bounds. Ball in place, 45-yard line, first down. So the Hornets will get good field position to open up as we get to our impact players for Delaware State. It's going to come on this matchup with these two guys on the field. Bryson Aline leads the team in rushing. He's averaging 4.9 yards a carry, and as I said, fifth in the MIAC in kick return yards. So he's going to make his impact felt on the offensive end and in special teams. So he's going to be key. As for Norfolk State, Quintrell Chung. Converted running back to a linebacker this season, and he had a game high 11 tackles in the loss last week against James Madison. But Quintrell Chung, again, still adjusting to the linebacker position and adjusting nicely so far. And so we get our first look at the Hornets offense. Jack McDaniels, a handoff to Bryson Aline. In the backfield, Aline cuts up field for a gain of three yards. That'll make it second and seven. Anthony Smith, the tackle for Norfolk State. Second and seven now. And you're going to see the Hornets run the football a lot, trying to take pressure off of their young quarterback, get him in good situations, third and shorts. Hornets in the pistol, man in motion. They go with a read option. McDaniels cuts up field. He'll grab close to a first down. It looks like they'll give it to him. Teron Selby, the man in motion there. They faked the handoff to Bryson Aline and went with an option play to the left. McDaniels kept it, cut up field, picked up the first down, and now the Hornets going quick. The tight end Giovanni Downey going in motion. McDaniels fakes to the left. Swing pass to the right. And a screen and another first down for the Hornets. But Tusua got it at the leading receiver on this Hornets team. Making the catch out to the right. He comes up limping just a little bit after the play. But got it at. Catching on as the Hornets' top receiver this season. Had 93 receiving yards. In the Hornets opener on August 31st, McDaniels dropping back, throwing deep over the middle, got a man and misses. McDaniels had Teron Selby, it looked like open over the middle and just threw it behind him. So the incomplete pass results in second and 10. So another man in motion. This time they'll give it off to Aline, and Aline jumps forward for about five yards, but there's a flag on the play. Holding call against Leaky Seu. Sayu, a freshman in this, a young offensive line for the Hornets. Two freshmen and three sophomores making up the front five for the Hornets. And this not the position you want to get your young quarterback in. Fighting the change, it's now second and 20. And now you're forcing your young quarterback into an almost guaranteed throwing situation. And now we've got another flag. Looks like it's going to be a false start. False start. Offense. Five-yard penalty, go second down. Ball in the penalty is second and 25. Ball on the 
So a false start and now second and 25 and the Hornets really up against it now. And curious to see what Coach Carter's play calling will be in this situation. He'll throw, McDaniels in the pocket, throws over the middle, got a man. This one's caught and it looks like it's good enough for a first down. Teron Selby deep over the middle, getting behind the defense once again and making the play. Selby, the sophomore, with a big catch over the middle. You see here laying out and making the play for his young quarterback. And great composure there for McDaniels to stand in the pocket with a blitzer barreling down on him and completes the throw over the middle. And just like that, from second and 25, it's first and 10 with the ball at the Spartans' 30-yard line. Back to the ground go the Hornets up the middle to Aline and he chucks forward for about four yards. Nafis West was announced as the starter for the Hornets, but it's been all Bryce and Aline on this opening drive. West coming off the excellent game last week against West Virginia. Had that 81 yard touchdown catch to go along with 50 yards rushing. But again, it's been all Bryce and Aline on this opening drive, and they'll hand it back to him. He cuts back to the left and a good tackle by Anthony Smith, the linebacker for Norfolk State getting through. Aline tried to cut it back, but Anthony Smith was there and wraps up, and that's going to make it third and six, it looks, and we've got a player down on the field for Norfolk State. It's number 95, Chris Lee. The man down on the ground for Norfolk State. A good opening drive for the Hornets. Jack McDaniel's been very composed and solid. Did miss one throw over the middle, but made up for it on his next opportunity. Second and 25, and the Hornets grabbed 27 yards for a first down. And you see what Coach Carter wants to do. They want to establish the run. Ladies and gentlemen, the presidential scholarship ball. Just as we said, their number one key to the game, the establish the run, the give your young quarterback Delaware good opportunities. It works the play action. As you see Chris Saturday, Lee up and able to walk off Downs, on Hotel his Casino. own power. So we will see if he's back out for the Spartans. But Jack McDaniel's been successful so far early on. And again, Hornets feel like this is one of their best opportunities to get that win, get off the schneid. Again, been since 2015, since since they picked up a win. Looking at one game in action right now around the MIAC, Bethune Cookman taking on Howard. Bethune Cookman up 14 to seven in that game. Monmouth, the non-conference Monmouth Hawks coming down to take on Hampton. Hampton two and one this season. And we had a game Thursday night, North Carolina Central edged out a 33 to 28 win over South Carolina State. It's third down and six for Delaware State. Ball on the Norfolk State 26 yard line. Wisdom Nazidi, the kicker for Delaware State, four for four so far in the early going this season. Third and six, we'll see if the Hornets can pick up the first down. McDaniels throwing over the middle. This one knocked away and it's intercepted. Nigel Chavis making the play, intercepted. It was deflected in front of him, didn't see who it was that deflected the pass, but a great play to jump in front of the receiver. And Chavis in the right place at the right time. You see McDaniels here trying to complete the pass over the middle, tipped away and just unlucky. Chavis right there to make the play. And now the freshman, another freshman playing quarterback in this one. It's Jawan Carter playing quarterback for the 0-3 Spartans, and we'll get our first look at the Hornets' defense, which has been pretty promising early this season. 
And a throw, open man over the middle. And a big hit. The catch made by Anthony Williams, the tight end over the middle, and a big gain up to the 45-yard line. So again, the Hornet defense forced three turnovers last week against West Virginia. Held the University of Delaware fighting Blue Hens to just 22 points. So it's been a strong defensive showing early on for Coach Carter's guys this season and looking to continue that now as the MEAC season really kicks off. A swing pass out to the right, just trying to dump it short, and it's incomplete. Pass intended for Aaron Savage, the running back on the right sideline. Norfolk State had a quarterback going on deep into the camp early this season. Two freshmen making up that battle, Trip Harrington and Juwan Carter, and Carter now getting the opportunity against the Spartans today. And in a five wide situation here on second and 10, he'll dump it short. Pass complete for about five yards. And it's number 30, Aaron Savage, the man making the catch. And so Savage was able to use his strength to grab an extra yard, so it's gonna be third and four. And so after that promising opening drive for the Hornets, they turn it over at Norfolk State, now looking to take advantage. Hornets defense looking to bail them out. Third and four, Carter rolling to his left. Quick dump pass short, and it's good enough for a first down to Marcus Taylor. Isaiah Small, the man making the tackle on the left sideline. But it's good enough for a first down to the Hornet 43 yard line. They needed four, they got six. Carter in the shotgun again. Aaron Savage alongside of him, three receivers, two to his right. Five defensive backs on the field for the Hornets. Carter runs right, tosses it out to Savage. Savage cuts up the middle. Big hole breaking a couple of tackles and he'll grab about 10 and a half, 11 yards. Good enough for a first down. It looked like Savage might be wrapped up near the line of scrimmage. But he cuts up the middle, makes a few men miss and just like that, another first down, down to the Hornet 33 yard line. Barton's at the line, Carter in the shotgun, rolls to his left, another short pass, this time to his tight end underneath, and he'll bowl forward for about six yards. Larry Bishop the third making the catch. And picking up the six yard gain, it'll be second and four. Second and four for North State, ball to the and you see a similar game plan from head coach Latrell Scott for the Spartans, trying to give everything, make everything easy. Some underneath throws get Juwan Carter into the game, settled in. And it's working so far for Norfolk State. This time they'll hand it off left, nowhere to go. CJ Jones on the carry, stop for loss. It was CJ Jones getting the handoff and Devin Adams bursting up. through the hole and hitting him hard and he'll lose about three yards, so it's going to be third and seven. It's third down for Norfolk State. About halfway through the first quarter, just over seven minutes remaining in quarter number one here on Hall of Fame Day at Alumni Stadium. Looked like there might have been a false start by a receiver on the right side. No call and a dump off pass again 
to Aaron Savage, and he grabs the first down. So a couple of third down opportunities for the Hornets defense to get off the field and unable to take advantage of it. And now Norfolk State in the red zone, ball right at the 20 yard line. Juwan Carter in the shotgun. Four receivers wide, another quick throw, and a pickup of about six yards. Carter's pass is complete to number 80, Isaiah Winstead. Isaiah Winstead making the catch. And so a gain of seven, it'll be second and three. And this Hornets defense being nickeled and dimed all the way down the field. Carter takes the snap, runs left, nowhere to go. The Hornets had the option sniffed out. And about a half a yard gain there for Juwan Carter, if anything. And so that will give the Hornets another third down opportunity. It's going to be third and three. It's third down and two for Northwest State. Ball on the DSU 12. Norfolk State been very successful on this drive with the short passes. They've gotten a lot to Aaron Savage out of the backfield. They've worked Anthony Williams, the tight end as well. We'll see what they draw up here on third and about three yards. Carter will run to the right. Hornets snuff it out all over this one. Can't get him down. They finally will and make the stop. Damon Atwater, Stevens, the man in the backfield to make the play. Several Hornets in the backfield. Jawan Carter showing some elusiveness, able to make a few men miss. It'll be a 34-yard field goal attempt for Norfolk State. Josh Nardone, the kicker. Freshman for Norfolk State, kick on its way. And it is no good, wide left. And so the Hornets catch a break there. Josh Nardone pulling this one wide to the left. A slight breeze out there, not too much. I don't think there would be enough to affect the kick. But the 34-yard field goal ends up wide left. And so that will keep the game scoreless at 4 minutes and 22 seconds remaining. As you see some highlights from the early going, both teams with successful drives. Hornets using the running game in the deep passing game. Norfolk State, on the other hand, just using the quick short passes. You see Josh McDaniels on the early drive making a big play but then the dangerous pass is tipped and intercepted by Nigel Chavez. And now you see the drive for Norfolk State. This one looked like Aaron Savage might be wrapped up in the backfield. Instead, he picked up about 11 yards. Savage, the 5'9", 210-pound junior. And so Savage, a tough man to bring down. So both teams having good, successful drives in their first going, but both making a mistake, one on special teams for Norfolk State and the other a turnover by the Hornets. And so we remain scoreless, just over four minutes left in the first quarter. McDaniels bringing the offense back out onto the field. Looks like it's Nyfees West now, the running back. He'll grab the carry. Move forward for about four yards, but we've got another flag. Aldricks Harris, the man in on the tackle for Norfolk State. Ball in the penalty. 
So a face mask penalty against Norfolk State will result in a first down. And that will move the ball all the way out to the 40-yard line. And so the Hornets, again, getting good field position. Last time they got it on an illegal procedure penalty on the opening kickoff. Now with a penalty on Norfolk State. We'll give the Hornets the ball at the 40. McDaniels will throw. He'll step up. Now he's going to take off and run and slide forward for a gain of about seven yards. Six yards, excuse me. So Josh McDaniels, a good six-yard gain, second and four. Now for the Hornets. And this this is how you operate with a young rookie quarterback trying to get yourself in manageable down and distances. And they try the screen pass out to Selby. And Selby only grabs about two yards. So that's going to bring up third and two. And a lot of times, wide receiver screen plays, you're trying to get the ball out to uh, your niftier players who can beat guys one-on-one. Everybody else is blocked. You rely on your receiver to beat a guy one-on-one and pick up some yardage. Selby unable to do so there. So that will bring up third and two. He'll hand it off to West. West bowls forward, and he's got enough for the first down and more, getting a big push from his offensive lineman. And that will take the ball all the way down to about the 43-yard line. Chris Lee, the man making the tackle, and we've got a Hornet offensive line down here on the left side of your screen. Can't see the number just yet on who the guy is down for the Hornets. It is an offensive lineman. And they are already very young on the offensive line. And so, again, we'll get you the number and player of the injured player as soon as we can. But the Hornets, again, moving the football into Norfolk State territory. This time going to try and finish the drive off. We mentioned Wisdom Nazidi and Fidel Romo Martinez both making this a much improved special teams unit for the Hornets. And it's number 64, Cade Pedro, the man hurt the center. Pedro, the sophomore out of Hawaii. And so they will get him looked at on the sidelines. Looks like a a leg injury for Pedro. And he certainly appears to be favoring that left leg. And back to action. Now we've got McDaniels under center for the first time today, and he trips. Norfolk State got a big push, and McDaniels on his way back trying to hand the ball off. It looked like they were either handing it off or going to a play action. Uh, McDaniels got tripped up over his own offensive lineman's foot, and so that's going to result now in a loss of four. So it's second and 14. McDaniels will just dump it off to the right. Nafis West will make the catch and get the yardage back and then some. And excuse me, it was Giovanni Downey, the man making the catch and grabbing the yardage. It's going to be third and five now for the Hornets. McDaniels in the shotgun. One man to each side. He'll dump it off to one and play. Drop, Nifis West not able to make the catch. And so an encouraging start to the drive for the Hornets. 
but it's going to bring up fourth and five from the 39-yard line. And so they'll send out Fidel Romo Martinez to try and pin the Norfolk State offense back. And I think this is a good decision. Your offense has been struggling so far this season. Romo Martinez, we mentioned the MEAC Player of the Week in the special teams department last week. And so give him an opportunity to pin the Norfolk State offense deep. And he will do just that. This one going to be down inside the 10-yard line at the 6. So Fidel Romo Martinez continuing his excellent season early on, and he will pin Norfolk State inside their own 10-yard line. And we mentioned the one of our keys to the game, field position. The Hornets have had two drives start in a great field position, one starting at their own 35. The other started at the 20, but after a penalty on the first play, they ended up getting the ball at the 40-yard line and now pinning Norfolk State back inside their own 10. So winning the field position battle early on are the Hornets. Now can they capitalize? Juwan Carter and the Norfolk State Spartans offense back out, a quick screen pass out to the left, and that one's good for about five yards. Marcus Taylor, the man making the catch. And the short passing game continues to be the story for Norfolk State. Juwan Carter not getting many air yards on these passes. But it's been effective thus far. We will see if the Hornets defense Starts to try and jump on those underneath routes. This time they do, and we've got a flag from the deep man. And it's going to be pass interference on the Spartans, I believe. Or excuse me, on the Hornets. Brian Cavacante, the man called for the foul. And so that's going to result in a first down for the Spartans. Ball at the Hornets 16 yard line. In that play, you can see the Hornets were really in zone coverage underneath, trying to take away the short passing game. Now a Jet sweep to number five, Marcus Taylor. And he'll grab about Marcus four Taylor yards. And so that'll make it second and six. And so a lot of movement early on in downs, and that'll end the first quarter. The end of the first quarter with the score. The score still nothing, nothing. Both teams having some successful offensive drives in their first opportunities. But nobody able to take advantage. We had a turnover on the Hornets opening drive. A missed field goal by Josh Nardone for Norfolk State. And the Hornets, both teams trying to get their first win of the season. North, or excuse me, Delaware State trying to get their first win since the end of the 2015 season. And in a dogfight early on. But again, winning the field position battle. They've gotten the run game going on that first possession. The second possession tried to go more with Jack McDaniels. And the drive ended up stalling out after they got into Norfolk State territory. As for Norfolk State, the story been a lot of underneath passes. Juwan Carter not having to throw it very deep, but they've been getting him outside the pocket. He hasn't had to make many reads. Just been rolling out, finding the underneath route, getting the open man, and letting the yak yards work. Norfolk State wrap, racking up the yards after catch yardage today. You're hearing tunes from the best band in all the land. The So as we get ready for the second quarter to kick off again, the score 
Still nothing, nothing here on Hall of Fame Day at Alumni Stadium. Halftime, the 2017 Hall of Fame class will be inducted for the Delaware State University Hornets and honoring the 2007 football team here. Along with the quarterback of that team, Vashon Winton. Winton went 30 and 14 in his career and led that Hornet team to a 10 and 1 season and a playoff berth in the 2007 season as we're back underway here in the second quarter. Juwan Carter, the pass out to the left, catch and a big hit. Marcus Taylor made the catch. Kiwan Selby making the tackle. And so the gain of about four. And so it's going to be third and two. Spartans were very successful on that opening drive on these situations, third and short. We'll see if the Hornets made any adjustments. Carter sends a man in motion. Now three receivers, two is right. Quick drop. Hornets take away the underneath route. Carter going to tuck it and run to the left side. He'll grab the first down and get out of bounds. Juwan Carter, 7 of 8 in that first quarter with for 54 yards. So it's an all very short Accurate passes for Jawan Carter. They've only had a couple of design run plays early on, have the Spartans, but been successful nonetheless. First and 10, second quarter just underway. Fake handoff now going deep. Is Carter in over everybody's head, nearly intercepted. Jihad Neubauer, the man deep in coverage. Total yards in that first quarter. Hornets had 81. The Spartans with 60. Of course, the Hornets had a second possession. Second and 10 now. Carter fakes the handoff. Quick throw over the middle to his tight end. Anthony Williams and the Hornets in a lot of off coverage and Norfolk State taking advantage there on second down Carter went to the play action quickly dumped it over the middle and Norfolk State steals about nine yards there on second and da second down and that's going to make it third and one. And now we're going to get a timeout. Coach Latrell Scott didn't like what he saw out of his offense. And so both teams going to get a chance now to talk it over. And so again, third and one. And as I was saying, the 2017 Hall of Fame class being inducted today. And in 2007, the Hornets football legacy added its most significant chapter, highlighted by a conference championship and historic firsts and national prominence. After posting an 8-3 and three record in 2006, the Hornets were among the favorites to win the 2007 MEAC title. And Delaware State opened the 2007 campaign with a win over nationally ranked Coastal Carolina. And after a victory over conference opponent Florida A&M gave the Hornets a 2-0 record, they lost to FBS Kent State in week three. And following that, they won eight consecutive games and made their way to the conference championship game against what do you know, the Norfolk State Spartans. And after trailing 21-3, in that game, they scored the last 18 points in regulation. 
won the game in overtime, and of course ended up getting a playoff berth. And so they, among many others, will be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Meanwhile, third and one. Spartans come out in an eye formation and a quick handoff to the fullback. It was Larry Bishop, the up man, and he took the handoff, grabbed about seven yards, and it's enough for a first down. Hornets averaging nearly five yards a carry. Juwan Carter throws this one deep. This one going to be underthrown and out of bounds. A good catch along the sideline by George Wahi. But unable to get that left foot down in bounds. And so that one will be incomplete. Juwan Carter being very successful underneath, but that's the second time on this drive he's tried to go deep. And neither pass has been very accurate. And so that'll bring up second and 10. Three receivers wide for Carter, one running back to his right, Savage. <coughs> Norfolk State now trying to get the call from the sideline and it's going to result in a delay of game. Hornets appear to be bringing the pressure. Carter looked to the sideline to change the play. And it results in a delay of game penalty. So a loss of five, and that'll make it second and 15. And now that will give the Hornets defense an excellent opportunity to get off the field. But this is when Norfolk State has really gone to the short passing game and grabbed seven, eight, nine, ten 10 yards and given themselves third and manageable situations. Carter rolling out to the right now. Hornets trying to take away the underneath pass, and Carter nowhere to go with it. Looks like he just threw it away. It was in the direction of number five, Marcus Taylor. Taylor with four catches in the early going for Norfolk State. This is the time when we make some noise. It's third down and and so that'll bring up third and 15, and now you're going to force Juwan Carter to have to beat you over the top, and he hasn't shown the ability to do that thus far. And so the Hornets helped out by the delay of game penalty on second down. And now in very off coverage. Norfolk State needs to get to the Hornets. 49-yard line, they won't do it. They'll wrap up Juwan Carter for the sack. It was Ulysses De Los Santos in the backfield making the sack. And you see there, Hornets had all kinds of pressure. Juwan Carter got away from it initially, but as soon as he spun around, De Los Santos right there to wrap up. And so a loss of six yards on the third down play. And so Norfolk State will punt it away. Taylor Gotti will punt it away in a low line drive punt, squibbing its way inside the Hornet 30-yard line, where it will be downed at the 28-yard line for the Hornets, and their offense will go back to work. Still nothing, nothing here on Hall of Fame Day at Alumni Stadium. 11.49 remaining here in the second quarter. Hornets will have the ball to 28 following the media timeout. Depends on who I'm announcing. Like Byron, I would rather have Byron or Derek here or something, but it doesn't really know what they're doing. 
Hornets offense back out onto the field. Hornets in the pistol starting at their own 29-yard line. McDaniels, two receivers left. They'll try the quick throw out to the left side. Pass complete to number four for two, Sua got an at. So that play good enough for eight yards. That'll make it second and two. Hornets again been averaging over four yards a carry on the ground. Jack McDaniels now five for nine for 59 yards in the ball game. They'll fake the play up the middle, run the option out to the left, and McDaniels just trying to grab enough for the first down. He'll do so out to the 40-yard line. So the Hornets fake the handoff to Aline up the middle, and Norfolk State went for it, but good job on the edge by their corners to get off their receiver blocks and force McDaniels out of bounds. But not before he got the first down. Now McDaniels in the shotgun, four receivers wide. Quickly looking to the left, play action, nobody open. Now rolling out to his left. Now heading back near the 20 yard line. Slings it deep and nobody there, it's out of bounds. And so McDaniels threw it away, but that a very dangerous play, he'd been nearly 20 yards behind the line of scrimmage before throwing that one away. That's one you've got to get outside and throw it away on the left sideline. But part of the learning process for freshman quarterbacks, you can't always try and do too much. You've got to take what the defense gives you, and if there's nothing there, just live to fight another day. And now they try the handoff up the middle to Aline, and he's stuffed at the line of scrimmage. And so now third and ten for the Hornets. Both teams struggling to sustain drives here after that. Both teams had strong opening drives. And since then... Nobody been able to really get anything going and finish it off. Now third and ten, McDaniels drops back to pass, feels pressure, he's going to go down. Sacked by number 95, Chris Lee. He went down with an injury, had to come off the field on that opening drive. And he comes back, gets the pressure on the blind side of Jack McDaniels and takes him down. So fourth and 15, you see McDaniels dropping bass, dropping back, excuse me, and Lee able to get around. Savion hopes and bring down McDaniels and sent out. Fidel Romo Martinez on to punt for the Hornets. And he'll send this one a low kick. Caught by Marcus Taylor. Now he's running all the way back inside his own 10-yard line. Hornets have him swarmed. Taylor gets out of it, and he'll get back out to about the 20-yard line. And now we've got a flag. And you saw Antoine White there at the end of the play down on the ground. And I think the flag very well might have something to do with that. White was sent to the ground and did not look happy when he got up. Not quite sure if somebody caused him to go down and that the result of the flag. But you see Marcus Taylor running all the way back near his own five yard line before cutting up the field, making a man miss. 
and grabbing a few yards. And you saw right there at the end of that replay, Antoine White was coming to a stop. The play was over, and he got shoved in the back. 15-yard penalty, and run, first down. And so an unsportsmanlike conduct all penalty on the Hornets. Didn't catch who the number for the player was, but just a boneheaded mistake. No reason to shove a guy down at the end of a play, and it's going to cost the Hornets 15 yards and give Norfolk State good field position as we near the halfway point in the second quarter. Eight minutes, 47 seconds remaining in quarter number two. And a defensive struggle we've got going on here. Both teams having successful opening drives. One ends in an interception, the other ends in a missed field goal. And since then, nobody able to really get anything going. So following the media timeout and the punt, Juwan Carter bringing the Norfolk State offense back out to work here and a quick throw out and in, incomplete and inaccurate pass out to the intended receiver, George Wahi. And that's where Norfolk State's been making their money today. Hornets been in off coverage for much of the day. And Carter been jumping them underneath there, though inaccurate with the pass. And Wahi unable to pick it off of the turf. And so second and ten, four receivers wide for the Spartans, one alongside Carter in the shotgun. C.J. Jones the back, Carter drops back, dumps it off to Jones on the left side. Jones cuts up the middle. He's got enough for a first down inside Hornets territory to about the 48-yard line. As you see here, the replay, Carter, just a quick dump out. To C.J. Jones, Jones gets a block, makes a man miss, and then carries a couple of Hornets defenders down to the 48-yard line. And we've got a man down. It's Malik Harris, one of the best players on this Hornet defense, number 24, Malik Harris, a senior out of Washington, D.C., and he is crucial for this team's success, especially on the defensive end. And he looked to be in some serious pain. And you see putting barely any weight on that right knee. And, and he's already got a brace on that right knee. Following the play, he took his helmet off and threw it onto Ladies the ground in disgust. Eight minutes and 33 seconds remaining in the first half. And so we will see if Harris is able to return today or if the injury is more severe. But meanwhile, Norfolk State just picked up a first down. They're in Hornet territory. Carter takes the snap, looking left. He's got a man. It looks like Marcus Taylor who makes the catch there on the left sideline. And he's taken out of bounds after about a five-yard gain. Marcus Taylor on his way to a very, very strong day. Over five catches already here in the first half. Second and five. Ball 
And you see this is what Norfolk State's been doing all day, just the underneath routes. Quick button hook there by Marcus Taylor. Now Juwan Carter takes the snap, trying to go with a draw, and the Hornets all over it. The Hornets were in the backfield by the time Carter caught the snap. And Carter just trying to get away, loses four yards. And just like that, the Hornets grab those yards back and now put themselves in a good opportunity here on third and nine to get off the field. Marcus Taylor here down at the bottom of your screen in the slot. Juwan Carter in the shotgun looking Taylor's way, and this one tipped over the middle. Tried to throw to Marcus Taylor over the middle. Juwan Devon right over the middle makes the play, knocks it away. And that'll bring up fourth down and a Norfolk State punt. Taylor Gody on the punt again. Last time he sent a low squibber down into the Hornets territory. This time he sends one bouncing Bryson Aline, or excuse me, not Bryson Aline, for two. Sua got an A. Fields it unable to get anywhere, so the Hornets pinned inside their own 10 yard line. And so both defenses continue to be the story of the game. We mentioned early on the Hornet defense has been strong in the early going this season. The offense still struggling to find its footing. And that's still the case today. And so with the media timeout, we're under seven minutes to go in quarter number two. And Jack McDaniels and the Hornet offense going to make their way out, out onto the field. And so we will see if they can get going offensively, sustain a drive, and put some points on the, on the board. Hornets back out in the pistol, three receivers wide. McDaniels takes the snap, hands it off to West on the on the left side. He's able to stay in bounds, picks up a first down and a lot more down to the 25-yard line. Now, Fee West able to stay in bounds. You see here, slick feet along the sidelines. Keeps himself in bounds right in front of the camera and gets a big gain to open up the drive for the Hornets out of the shadow of their own goal line and to the 25. They'll run it again. It's West again, he'll grab five yards. And Feast West coming off a career game. He had an 81-yard touchdown, touchdown catch last week against West Virginia. They go right back to him up the left side. He's got six yards and another Hornet first down. And we mentioned the stalemate that the Hornets have in the backfield. Bryson Aline and I Feast West, and they've got Mike Waters as well, who we have yet to see here in this first half. But West taking the carries here on this drive. And if you're Coach Carter, I don't think I'd get away from it. Keep handing the ball to number 14. And they'll go with a pass. McDaniels throws right. That's good for about 9 or 10 yards. Catch, catch made by Teron Selby. And so it's good enough to get the ball to the Spartan 46. It's a first down. Hornets trying to go quickly now. McDaniels takes the snap. Quick look to the right. Nothing there. Now dumps it short. And it's good for about four yards. 
Brian Tallis, the man making the catch. And a good play there from Jack McDaniels. His first read wasn't there, thought about tucking and running, but instead a little bit of a Tim Tebow jump pass almost down short to Bryant Dallas. He made the catch. And good enough to grab the Hornets a few yards on first down. Now they'll go back to the ground. Norfolk State in the backfield. Number 32, Aldrich Harris blitzing on the play, got to the backfield, and he was on the ground, but right in Nafis West's pass. And West trying to jump over him, just got clipped and went down, and just like that, it's third and 12. So once again, a promising start to a drive for the Hornets, now faced with a third and 12. McDaniels in the pistol, looking left. He'll dump it short to West. West going to try and make a man miss. He'll get to about the 49-yard line. But not enough for the first down. And so once again, the Hornets running the ball very effectively. And then on second down, right around midfield, they lose seven yards. And it ends up costing them a promising drive. And so Coach Carter calling a timeout here. And a pe peculiar situation to call a timeout, fourth and four. And you burn a timeout. So say for example, give you guys some instructions. On a punt play where you're giving the ball to the other team anyway. So Coach Carter calls the timeout. You see some highlights, and it's going to be a lot of defensive highlights from this first half so far. Both teams been strong on the defensive end. Neither offense able to finish off a drive. Punting unit back out on to the field. Romo Martinez sends this one deep. And this one will take a hop into the end zone. And so the Spartans will get this one at the 20 yard line. Not what Romo Martinez wanted to see. Trying to pin the Spartans deep. And so Jawan Carter and the Spartan offense back out on to the field. Just over three minutes remaining. Here in the first half of action, so the Hornets defense going to try and make a play and keep this game at nothing to nothing heading into the half. And another quick pass, this one out to Isaiah Winstead. So a pickup of, eight, of eight yards on first down. It'll be second and two. Handoff <coughs> to C.J. Jones, it looked like. And Jones grabs about three yards, enough for a first down. Or folks, they taking their time. Still plenty of time remaining in this first half for them to get a drive going and get down the field and score points. Four receivers wide again. Marcus Taylor in the slot to Carter's right. He'll look to him and overthrows him over the middle of the field. And that's a dangerous part of the field to overthrow somebody. A lot of times the safeties and linebackers are lurking right behind the receivers over the middle. Nobody there for the Hornets, and so it will fall incomplete, second and 10.
for Norfolk State. Three receivers wide and a tight end. And they'll hand it off. This is Savage. Savage bowls forward for about six yards. And so third and four, the Hornet defense going to try and get off the field. Norfolk State trying to keep the drive alive, trying to get some points before the half. Carter rolling out to his left, makes the quick throw along the sidelines, and the play is made. It's a catch. However, it's short of the first down. Play only good for about two yards. And so Norfolk State will send out the punting unit. Got an A back deep to return it, and it's a fake. Norfolk State fakes the punt. And it looks like they've got enough for the first down. And they will move the change first down. And that a risky play to call for a freshman punter. Godi, you see, that's a called play, and you leave it up to the punter. Godi has the option if the re return unit is heading back to field the kick. Then you take off and run with it. And that's exactly what Godi did. And enough to get the first down. And on the first down play, Carter and his receiver, a bit of a mix, miscommunication. And so the pass sails over his head incomplete. That'll bring up second and 10. It's second and 10, ball on the 42-yard line. And so new life for the Spartans offense. The drive keeps going. This one underneath to Marcus Taylor. He'll run a crossing route over the middle and get to the 45-yard line. And Marcus Taylor continuing to rack up catches for this Spartan team. And now they're in the Hornet territory. Defense been the name of the game so far, but the Spartans trying to change that here late in the first half. Carter in the shotgun again. Three receivers all to his left. Looking, looking, nowhere to go. Now he'll dump it short to Anthony Williams' tight end. And he's got enough, it looks like, for another Spartans first down. First down, down for Spartans. Now the Spartans will go quickly, and we've got a false start. Anthony Williams called for the false start. I think that there were a couple of guys that went on the snap. Might have been a case of the center being off on the snap count because it looked like the entire right side of the offensive line moved. So now first and 15, Carter dropping back. Another short one over the middle of Marcus Taylor. Hillbrook come down with it. And a six-yard gain on first down for Marcus Taylor. Second and nine now inside of a minute remaining. 47 seconds to go. Carter will hand it off to Savage. Savage up the middle. They catch the Hornet defense off guard and grab eight yards, and that'll make it third and one. And I believe we've got a timeout called now by the Spartan timeout. offense. And you see a replay here, of Savage taking the run up the middle. I think the Hornets this late in the first half expecting a pass play. And Norfolk State able to catch them off guard, grab a chunk yardage play for seven. And that'll make it third and two with 39 seconds remaining here. They do not get in. So that means we as a Delaware State University family, along with somebody's kid right here, 
39 seconds remaining in the first half of action. Norfolk State driving again. Josh Ardone already has missed a kick earlier today. Norfolk State approaching field goal range, of course. They're thinking touchdown. They've got one timeout remaining. They used one now, earlier because she was before nice. a third down play. My best friend's wife just used their second her one there. So one timeout remaining for the Spartans. 39 seconds remaining. It's third and one, and you've got to go back to that fake punt. How much of a difference will that make? I formation now for the Spartans. Last time they did this, they went to the up man, A.J. Bishop, and now we've got a flag. Black flag on the play. And the Hornets just gifted the Norfolk State Spartans a first down. It's an illegal substitution. 12 men on the field. And so now it'll be first down at the Hornet 22 yard line. And so Norfolk State with an opportunity to end this first half and give themselves the lead. Carter in the shotgun, three receivers wide. He'll drop back. Now rolling to his left, nobody in front of him. Carter forced out of bounds. Good close there by the Hornet linebacker. And so they only give up about three yards on first down. So it'll be second and seven. And again, Norfolk State already in field goal range, so this is about scoring a touchdown in the final 30 seconds. Again, they do have one timeout remaining. And we will see what they draw up here. Coach Latrell Scott with his freshman quarterback. Carter dropping back, got a man open down the right sideline. The catch is made. He got a foot down and got out of bounds. What a catch. Chuma Awana making the catch on the right sideline. Went up and got it. Got his right foot down. And it was good enough for a first down. And it puts the ball out at the three-yard line. Still 26 seconds to go. And Norfolk State has a timeout. So with the timeout, that gives them the option to still run it. So the Hornets have to be aware for the run and the pass. Carter under center, I formation. They'll hand it to the big fella, and he will go down at the one yard line. Number 44, Cedric McCall will go down at the one yard line. And Norfolk State burns their final timeout. 18 seconds to go in the first quarter. McCall, six foot two, 235 pound freshman out of Richmond, Virginia. He is a load, a tough one to bring down. And so curious to see what Norfolk State draws up. Of course, if you run it and don't get it, you risk running out the time here on the first half of action. I would expect to see some kind of rollout to either side for Juwan Carter and give Carter the option. If you've got a man open, throw it. If you can run it in, use your legs and run it. If not, throw it out of bounds. Live to fight another day. We will see what Coach Scott draws up. It's third and goal, or excuse me, second and goal from the one-yard line. I formation. Carter hands it to the up man, A.J. Bishop. Hornets get the initial push, and they will stop him short. Ten seconds, nine, eight, seven, six. Spartans running out of time. They've got to spike it. And they spike it, and it... The scoreboard reads zero. Yeah, 
And so the ref makes the call. The ball had hit the ground prior to the clock running out. A second to spare for Norfolk State. And so Josh Nardone will get the opportunity here with a chip shot. And Coach Carter now going to call a timeout. Might want to discuss something with the referee. And I've never been a fan of those situations late in games when the clock's running out. Every other play that last second would run off, but because it's the final play of the half, the refs make the call. You've seen it several times in basketball games and at the end of football games, that second, that extra second, half a second always runs off. Just with human error managing the clock, it is hard to be exactly perfect. But things magnified in the waning minutes and seconds of the first half. So the Spartans will get an opportunity. Nardone missed one earlier from 34 yards. This, however, just a 23-yarder, or excuse me, an 18-yarder, and he puts it right down the middle. And so that will conclude the first half of action. Norfolk State marching down the field to end the first half and kicking the field goal to put themselves up three to nothing at halftime here, Hall of Fame day at Alumni Stadium, a defensive slugfest in the first half. And Norfolk State will take a three to nothing lead at halftime here at Alumni Stadium. We'll be back for the second half of action. This Hall of Famer was a football letter winner and an outstanding coach in high school football in the state of New Jersey, inducted as an honorary member, Tyron Belfort. This Hall of Famer is DSU's longest product to play in the National Basketball Association. He was an all BX performer here at Delaware State. Show some love for Emmanuel Stevens. This morning was a baseball record holder and a MIAC player of the year. Put your hands together for Scott Stevens. This Hall of Fame was a football letter right here at Delaware State. He was inducted as a contributor. Show some love for 2017 Hall of Famer Steven this Hall of Famer was a football standout and later as a Hornets assistant coach. He's inducted as an honorary member. Show some love for Gerald Kobasa. This Hall of Famer was a three-time Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference softball player of the year. Make some noise for Hall of Famer Jordan Reed. This Hall of Famer is the all-time winningest softball coach at DSU and led the Hornets to the 2008 MIAC Championship and NCAA Tournament. Make some noise for Jim Seven! This Hall of Famer is the winningest quarterback in the history of Delaware State, led the Hornets to the 2007 MIAC Championship. Put your hands together for Bashan Winter! This Hall of Famer has been a fixture on the Delaware State campus for more than 50 years, serving as team equipment manager and curator. Show some love for Hall of Famer Arthur Wright. Again, we represent three Hall of Fame teams last evening, including the 1963 CIAA Championship Hornet baseball team. 
Also honored last evening was the 2006-07 Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference champion, Lady Hornet Basketball Team! And in 2007, the Hornets won the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Championship in football. Make some noise for our 2007 Mid-Eastern Championship football team! Once again, ladies and gentlemen, stand to your feet and show some love for our BSU Athletics Hall of Fame 2017 class. And all Hall of Famers who are in attendance, please stand in time to be recognized. Anyone who is in the Delaware State University Athletic Hall of Fame, please stand at this time and show some love. Hornet fans. Approaching storm. It's your turn to the BSU Approaching Storm Marching Band would like to thank the BSU administration, faculty, staff, students, and the BSU alumni for your continued support of the Approaching Storm Marching Band. The BSU Approaching Storm Drum Major is once again Mr. Stone Cold Stephon Bridges. Please show him some love. Mr. Drum Major, let's get it in gear. Release the storm and let's change the atmosphere.
talk about but we also do have to give all my alumni giving back is very essential make sure you visit the website make sure you anything matters ten dollars twenty dollars two hundred dollars two hundred thousand dollars all the rest of my board of trustees right here these are board of trustee folks look these are important people raise your hand raise your hand talk to the people Amen. 
He was board of trustee member too. He just a visitor. Where are you from? Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. All right, all right. I, I let him throw. That's all I'm talking about. Get the camera over here. I want to give a special shout out to the 2007 MEAC football champions, players and coaches, led by my coach, Ed LeVan, Coach Petty, Coach Hall, Coach Thomas, and Coach Fatty. <laughs> that was his real name. It's the start of the second half, and it's time to get in the Hornets. Touch that one streak. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for the second half here at Alumni Stadium. Norfolk State with a 3 to nothing lead over the Delaware State University Hornets. And the Spartans will get the first ball to open up the second half. So they had a good drive to close out their first half, grab three points. Now they're going to open up with the second half, try and keep the momentum going, maybe get a two-possession lead on this Hornet football team before the Hornets can see the ball again. We'll get you some key first-half stats after the kickoff. Some other scores around the MEAC nearly halfway through the fourth quarter. Bethune-Cookman on top of Howard, 24-20. to And Hampton and Monmouth have reached halftime at 16-14. to Hampton on top. Marcus Taylor takes the kickoff. A lot of room to run in front of him. He's out across the 30-yard line. Makes a man miss across the 40 down to the 43-yard line. So Norfolk State starting to get some momentum here. They close out the opening half with a field goal. Then Marcus Taylor opens up the second half with an excellent kick return and that was all about the blocking in front. Hornets not able to get down the field and the special teams for the Spartans does its job. And Marcus Taylor takes advantage from the first half, 144 yards through the air for Juwan Carter. He was 17 of 26. And so the Hornets have to figure out a way to stop this quick passing game for Norfolk State. As the first play, they go to Aaron Savage who runs for about five yards. And we've got a man down on the line for the Norfolk State Spartans. It looks like number 77, Kenneth Kirby. It is. And so Kirby in a lot of pain. Something in that left leg bothering him. And so a big kick return to open up the second half and then a five yard run. And now Kenneth Kirby, the offensive lineman for the Spartans. Kirby, the 6'5", 275 pound sophomore. Kirby out of Newport News, Virginia. So he is up and helped off the field. And continuing to look at the first half stats, Norfolk State outgaining the Hornets 170 yards to 129. And they've had the ball nearly twice as much as the Hornets. 19 minutes and 40 seconds time of possession for the Spartans compared to just 10 minutes and 14 seconds for the Hornets. Second and five, now Carter in the shotgun. Another quick pass out the left to Marcus Taylor. He makes a man miss. Cuts up field inside the 40, down to about the 33-yard line. And excuse me, that was George Wahi making the play. But the continued short passing game, and Coach Carter and this Hornets team have failed to make the adjustments. The corners continue to play off coverage. And when I say off, I mean off. They've been back about eight yards on every play. And you see it again here, just continuing soft coverage, letting Carter take what he wants underneath. Now they hand the ball off to Savage. Savage goes for about two yards before being brought down. 
And Marcus Taylor, a big story from that first half. He opened up the second half with a big kick return, but he had seven catches for 41 yards in that first half of action. And so it's second down and nine. Carter again in the shotgun, four receivers wide. Carter looking deep down the left sideline. Got a man, it's knocked away, nearly intercepted. Kwan Selby, the man in coverage. Chuma Awana, the man Carter was looking for. But the Hornets with good defense there. And when the other team tries to go deep, it pays off when you're in soft coverage. But they have, the Spartans have not tried to go deep very often today. And they've been able to beat the Hornets underneath. Now third and nine. Carter again in the shotgun. Three receivers to his right, one to his left. Dropping back to pass. Hornets get pressure. He dumps it underneath to Wahi. And he's brought down at the 28-yard line. 29-yard line, excuse me. And so that'll bring up fourth down. From here, it would be about a 46-yard field goal. And so it doesn't look like they will rely on Nardone to kick it. They're going to go for it. It's fourth and six. It's fourth down and six. Ball on the 29-yard line. Norfolk State comes out in the shotgun. Two backs in the set and a timeout called by Coach Scott. Norfolk State. And that's frustrating for a coach early on in the second half. You've already got to burn a timeout. And in a close game like this, those timeouts can really come in handy. And it nearly cost them the three points they got at the end of the first half. They had to burn a timeout earlier on in the first half and only had two left for the final drive and had a second to spare on the clock. When they were able to send out the field goal unit, they got the spike off and down, and so they had a second to spare, and so now already in the second half, they have to burn a timeout, but it's a big, it's a key play here. It's fourth and six from the Hornet 29-yard line. Again, it would be about a 46-yarder from here, and so Coach Scott trusting his young freshman quarterback to try and get this first down. And so following the timeout, Norfolk State will be going for it. It's fourth down and six. Ball on the 29 yard line. Carter in the shotgun. Three receivers wide, two to his left. Tight end in the set as well. Carter drops back, gets pressure from his left side, throws underneath. He's got a man. It's why he catches and down to the 13 yard line. Juwan Carter had the pressure right in his face, was able to get around it, and found Wahi underneath. And Wahi picking up the first down to the 13 yard line. And so now Norfolk State two for two on fourth downs. They've been very good on third down so far, completing nearly 50% of their third down conversions. And now two for two on fourth down. Now a quick throw out to the right to Marcus Taylor. And he goes down to about the three yard line on the wide receiver screen. And so it will result in a first down to the two yard line. And so the Hornets in need of another goal line stand to keep this a one possession game. Spartans come out in the shotgun. Carter has Savage to his left, he'll hand it to him. Savage runs along the line of scrimmage, nowhere to go. Hornets get good pressure up front and bring down Savage behind the line of scrimmage. Second down for the Spartans. 
So Santos able to get in the backfield and make the play. And so second and goal from the three-yard line now. Carter will come out in a three-wide set. Tight end and a running back. The back still savage. Anthony Williams, the tight end, goes in motion. Carter will roll to his left, and we've got a flag. Flag on the play. play. False start. False start. Offense, number 62. Five-yard penalty. False start called on number 62, Dominic Jordan. When it's a penalty against him, we clap our hands. And so that one hurts for Norfolk State now. Now it's going to be second and goal from the eight-yard line. I say I got to teach them if I try to be fans now. I see it. Spartans looking to open up their lead, make it a two-possession game. Hornets trying to keep them out of the end zone. Carter, two backs, three receivers in the shotgun. Drops back, throws over the middle. It's caught for a touchdown. First touchdown of the day, a great play made. Great play made over the middle. Jawan Carter completing the pass. And the Spartans able to make it a two possession game. After the score, unfortunately, line conduct, offense number 84. The field will be enforced on the succeeding kickoff. The score is good. And so Chuma Awuna, who made the catch called for an unsportsmanlike conduct. And so that will cost Norfolk State 15 yards on the kickoff. So Hornets should start the next drive with good field position. And now we've got a stoppage here on the extra point. And so Norfolk State back-to-back -back drives, able to take it down the Hornets' throat. And the kick is up, and it is good. So the media timeout following the touchdown, Norfolk State now up 10 to nothing here at Alumni Stadium on Hall of Fame Day. And the Hornets very optimistic coming into today following their performance last week. Felt like this was a good opportunity to get off of the losing streak. And now they've been punched in the mouth by this Norfolk State team, and they're going to have to respond. We'll see what they've got following the media timeout. Hornets will get the ball. And so Norfolk State, following the penalty, will have to kick off from their own 20-yard line. Aline will field it at his 20. He'll cut up field, a big hole there across midfield. Bryson Aline, nobody in front of him. He will score. 
There's a flag on the play. Aline will outrun everybody and score, but there is a flag on the play. This one could be coming back. So Teron Selby called for the illegal block in the back. That will negate the touchdown and negate some of the field position. The penalty occurred at the Horn at 45-yard line, so they will start at their own 35. And so Bryson Aline showing his effectiveness in the kick return game. We mentioned he's fifth in the MIAC in kick return yardage. And nearly broke one there. Well, he did break one there, but the penalty will bring it back. And so Jack McDaniels and this Hornets offense will have to go back to work and trying to find their stride on the offense. And now we've got a penalty. It's going to be a false start on the offense. Oh, excuse me, we've got a timeout. The timeout was called before the flag. And so we mentioned Coach Scott having to, having to burn a timeout for the Spartans. Coach Carter has to burn a timeout of his own. And so both teams now with just two timeouts remaining. And it's looking like Coach Carter might need those timeouts more than Coach Scott at the moment. Still a long way to go in the football game, but with the way the Hornets offense has played, uh, it, is, it is going to be an uphill battle the rest of the way to try and get themselves back in the game. And the defense is going to have to make some adjustments right now because the underneath passing game is really, really starting to take its toll on this Hornets football team. And so out of the timeout, McDaniels out in the pistol again. Two receiver, two tight end set. He'll fake the handoff. Looking deep down the left sideline and the pass is underthrown. Had Godine open over the middle and the pass two yards underthrown. Vincent White, the assistant head coach and offensive coordinator for the Hornets. Ball handed off now here, Bryson Aline. And Aline goes forward for about three yards, and so that'll make it third and seven. White, a graduate of Stanford University in 1984, also the running backs coach. And he's got some good ones here at Delaware State. and maybe not using them as much as they should with a freshman quarterback. And so now third and seven, McDaniels up against the sticks again. A quick throw out to the right. Makes a man miss, got the first down to about midfield. Got it A with the catch on the left sideline. Makes a man miss. And that's what you look for out of your number one receiver. Got to make that kind of play on third down. He's able to do it, and the Hornets will keep the drive alive. Now down to the midfield stripe. Jordan Hanna will check in at receiver for Godinay. 
Go back to the ground. Aline cuts it right now. Goes outside. Got a hole up the middle, and he's got a first down and another flag. And there's two flags on the play, both in the same area. And it's going to be holding on the offense. Holding offense, number 66. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. The beat first down. Caden Crawford, the sophomore, called for the hold. And so the Hornets continuing to shoot themselves in the foot with the penalties. They had six penalties for 71 yards in the first half. Now two key penalties early on in the second half. Both, both on Bryce and Aline plays. And now they're up against it again, first and 20. McDaniels will drop back to pass, slips a defender. Now rolling to his right, nowhere to go with the football. And thrown and it's intercepted. Jack McDaniels trying to do too much, throws an interception, and now we've got a flag at the end of the play, likely going to be an unnecessary roughness late hit. So Quintrell Chung, we mentioned him as an impact player in this game, gets the interception, and that one's all on the freshman quarterback making the mistake there, and then a compounding of errors, an unnecessary roughness late hit penalty, tacks on an extra 15 yards. The Hornets now with nine penalties in the ball game and over 120 yards worth of penalties. And this one batted down at the line of scrimmage. Good play by the Hornet D-line and the Hornets defense really trying to stand on its head here and keep this game within two possessions. I think you'd have to consider it a win if they were able to hold Norfolk State to a field goal on this possession. Just under eight minutes remaining in the third quarter. Jack McDaniels just throwing his second interception of the game and first and 20 trying to make too much happen rather than throwing it away, tries to force a pass into triple coverage and it's intercepted. Now Carter throwing out to the left. This one incomplete out of bounds. Carter's pass is incomplete. He was looking for Isaiah Winstead along the left sideline, but Winstead bobbled it before he completed the catch. So it's third and 10 now for Norfolk State trying to take advantage of the turnover. Hornet defense trying to hold. Hold them here, ball at the 32-yard line. Play action, Carter throwing over the middle. This one right through the hands of the defender. It was nearly intercepted. Isaiah Winstead was the intended receiver. It looked like Kwan Selby, the man who dropped the interception. It's fourth down and 10. And it's fourth and 10, and this out of Josh Nardone's range. And so Norfolk State will go for it, fourth and 10. Crowd getting into a chance of defense, rolling through Alumni Stadium. Carter drops back to pass, throwing deep down the left sideline. Man-to-man -man coverage, it's knocked away. And the Hornets defense makes the stand. With a freshman quarterback, sometimes you have to bail him out. The freshman quarterback made a mistake. Jack McDaniels threw the interception. 
and the Hornet defense bails him out. Here's the fourth down play. Carter down the left sideline. And the pass knocked away. Great defense out there by K1 Selby. Pass was intended for Isaiah Winstead. And so now the Hornets go back to work. With a new man at the helmet quarterback. He'll run upfield. It's Keenan Black who was in at quarterback running the option on first down. And it's a and he picks up the first down. Keenan Black right in the game, keeps it on the option pitch. Nearly broke that one open. The last man there makes the tackle. Ball at the Hornet 45, and the crowd beginning to get into it. Hornets trying to turn the momentum. And we get a false start. I think that one's on the center. Not for the false start, but the... Charles Wallace in at center, replacing K. Pedro, who got hurt earlier in the game, and Wallace late on the snap. And it results in a false start penalty on the Hornets. Back to work. Black looking left again. This time, Norfolk stayed all over it. And they will call Keenan Black down before the fumble. And Black gets taken down. It looks like a loss of about a yard or two. Chris Lee on the tackle. Second down for Delaware State. Chris Lee made the tackle, so second and 16 now for the Hornets. Back in the pistol. Black hands it off up the middle. Giovanni Downey, the man getting the carry on second down. Giovanni Downey on the carry. It's third and 13. And he gets three yards to third and 13. Now Keenan Black yet to throw the ball since he's checked in on this possession. Third and 13, almost forced to. He will. Rolling out left, gets pressure, loses the football. And it looks like Delaware State got it back. But Chris Lee continuing to wreak havoc on this Hornet offensive line. Pressure in Keenan Black's blindside immediately. He nearly got away. Chris Lee had a hold of his uniform and Black lost the football, able to dive back on it. And so it's fourth down and 25. A high snap here to Romo Martinez. He fields it. Kick Marcus Taylor bobbled it and then picked it up. And now we've got a flag on the play. I believe this one is going to go against Norfolk State. So it went against Richard, against Richard Russell Jr. of Norfolk State, a block in the back penalty. And so Norfolk State will start at their own 25-yard line, but the Hornets continuing to struggle to get anything going on the offensive end. Juwan Carter, quarterback for the Spartans, throws it out left to Marcus Taylor. He makes the catch, but for a short gain of about three yards. Second down for Norfolk State. The second and seven for Norfolk State and had a great opportunity and and seven for on their last drive to maybe put this game out of reach with the way the Hornets offense is played. But the Hornets defense made the stand, kept themselves in the game. 
And we've still got a 10-point ball game. Juwan Carter again in the shotgun. Quick throw out to his left. And the catch is made by 84, Chuma Owana. And again, continuing to nickel and dime the Hornets down the field. And that's going to make it third and two. It's third down and two. Ball on the 33-yard line. Juwan Carter in a three-wide set, one tight end, and he's got C.J. Jones alongside of him. Takes the snap, hands it to Jones. Jones finds a hole, and he's got enough for a first down down to the Spartan 39-yard line. First and 10 again for the Spartans as they near midfield. Three receivers wide. Taylor a quick throw to the right and this one batted down at the line of scrimmage. And so that'll bring up second and 10. Delaware State defense continuing to be solid playing this bend but don't break defense making Norfolk State sustain drives all the way down the field. And they've done it twice, but at this point, you've got to start to think that uh, the defense is going to need to make a big play, force a turnover, even score themselves to get back in this one. And they nearly come up with a great play on the outside by number 42, Carter Wilkins. And that was a big time play to go up high, point the ball, and knock it away. It's third down and 10. Ball on the 39 yard line. And so that'll bring up third and 10, an opportunity for the Hornets defense to get off the field. Marcus Taylor in the slot to Carter's right. He'll take the snap. Looking left, trying, firing deep down the left sideline. Pass underthrown and knocked away. Carter's pass is incomplete. And so that'll bring up fourth down. And the Hornets have been very successful. Whenever Jawan Carter's tried to throw deep, the Hornets defense has been all over it. And the punt is blocked. The punt is blocked. And there's the big play the Hornets were looking for. It was number 92, Caleb Ebron, getting in the backfield and blocking the punt. The lead Ebron on the punt block. Hornets take over. Ebron on the punt block. Ebron on the punt block. Hornets take over. First and ten. And the special Hornets. teams continuing to make a difference in this one. The field goal at the end of the first half was caused by a fake punt by Norfolk State. This time, the Hornets make the play on special teams, block the punt, and now they'll start with the ball inside the red zone. And Jack McDaniels back out at quarterback for the Hornets. Ball at the 18-yard line. Three receivers, two backs. McDaniels in the shotgun. He'll hand it off to Aline. Aline bowls forward, gets a yard, maybe two. Hornets quickly back to the line. Same formation, three receivers, two backs. McDaniels in the shotgun. He'll look left to throw. Aline picks up a blitzer. McDaniels rolling out. He'll throw this one away wisely. Throws this one onto the track surrounding the stadium. And so that'll bring up third and eight. And the Hornets have begun to struggle on first and second down. And it's causing them problems 
unable to put themselves in good situations on third down and now in the red zone facing a third and eight. Trying to take advantage of this great field position and put up six points. Or Folk State brings the blitz. Hornets pick it up. McDaniels has a man in the end zone. It's caught. Touchdown, Hornets. It's a Hornets We've got a flag on the play, and I think it's going against the Hornets. It's a false start. It's a false Excuse me, an illegal formation on the Hornets, but it hurts just the same. Another touchdown brought back by a flag. And so the five yard penalty makes it third and 13. And the Hornets again continuing to do more damage to themselves with the penalties. Two touchdowns now called back because of penalties. You have to wonder where this game would be without those calls. McDaniels back to pass again. Hornets offensive line unable to make anything happen. McDaniels is brought down, but there is a flag. And it might have been a face mask. Couldn't quite tell. It was. Number 94, Josh Bryant, the man in the backfield, got to Josh McDaniels and trying to bring him down just got a hold of the face mask and so it's a 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down and so Norfolk State bails out the Hornets on third and long and so now it's first and goal ball at the seven yard line or excuse me First and 10 ball at the 11-yard line. McDaniels hands this one off to West. West runs forward for three yards. That'll make it second and seven. And what a wild sequence this has been. It was fourth down for the Spartans. Hornets get in the backfield, block a punt. And then the Hornets on third and eight looked like they scored a touchdown. It's called back by a false start penalty. And then on third down, it looked like Norfolk State was going to get the stop and a sack. And instead, it was a face mask. And now the Hornets get an automatic first down. And now second down ball at the eight-yard line. Have, they can get a first down without scoring. Handoff again to West. West gets across the five-yard line down to about the two and a half. And so that's going to make it third down at about a yard and a half for the Hornets. A, a long one yard on third down. McDaniels in the backfield. West to his left. Aline to his right. Eight men in the box for the Spartans. Play clock down to four. He'll hand it to Aline this time. Now McDaniels keeps it. And he might have enough for the first down. And they're going to mark him a half a yard short. And decision time for Coach Carter. Do you go for it or do you take the points? Players want him to go for it. And that's the end of the third quarter, so Coach Carter will have some time to think about it. Things getting very interesting here at Alumni Stadium. Norfolk State opened up the first half, or excuse me, opened up the second half with the ball. They go right down the field, score the touchdown, go up 10 to nothing. And then... Following the touchdown, they got an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, kicked off from their own 20. Bryce and Aline took it all the way back for a touchdown. It was called back due to an illegal block in the back. And since then, the Hornets have had another touchdown on this drive, called back, but they're still driving. Ball at the half-yard line. 
And now the sticks are out. Referee's going to check, see how far it is. Coach Carter, I'm sure, asked for a measurement to see how far the Hornets needed to get to get the first down. And it's not very much. No signal yet from the referees, but again, this has been an all-out slugfest. Both defenses performing at a high level. Norfolk State just been able to sustain a couple of drives and finish in the red zone, scoring a touchdown and ending up with a field goal. Hornets have two turnovers in this one, both interceptions by Jack McDaniels. Neither costing the Hornets or neither resulting in points the other way, but it probably cost the Hornets at least three points. Their opening drive of the ball game, they march down the field, were inside of the Norfolk State 25. And McDaniels threw a pass over the middle that was tipped and intercepted. And so the offense is still on the field for the Hornets. So they are going to go for it. Bryce and Aline, the running back. Jack McDaniels making his way out onto the field. And so the referees right now, you see them with the chains and, and everything. They're setting the ball, make sure that it is in the right spot. And so it's fourth down and inches. And this, the biggest play in the game so far. If Norfolk State can get a stop, all the momentum would swing their way. And it would certainly be a defeating result for the Hornets. Bryson Aline checks out. Nifis West comes in to run for him. It looks like the Hornets are going to be in the pistol. And so the referees blow the whistle. We're good to go. McDaniels under center, West in the backfield. One receiver to the left, one to the right. 41 goes in motion. Snap, West breaks the tackle, he's in for the touchdown. The Hornets are on the board. Nafis West makes a man miss in the backfield, slips through the line and scores the touchdown. The Hornets are in this one. The crowd into it. And Wisdom Nazidi out to try and make it a three-point game, but the Hornets showing life here in the fourth quarter. 14.54 remaining in the ball game. And it's 10 to six. Nazidi out to try and tack on the extra point. Kick up, and it is good. And we've got a three-point game here at Alumni Stadium in Dover, Delaware on Hall of Fame Day at Delaware State University. The class of 2017 inducted last night honoring the conference champion 2007 football team and the 2017 football team trying to give them something to enjoy here today. At Alumni Stadium, that one all sparked by the blocked punt. So the special teams coming through for the Hornets. If you remember a couple of years ago before Coach Carter got here, the Hornets had one of the worst special teams in the Division I AA. Struggled with basic fundamentals. Coach Carter has turned that around. We talked about Fidel Romo Martinez being the special teams player of the week last week in the MEAC Conference. Fidel Romo Martinez has yet to miss a kick yet this season. And now a blocked punt that turns into a six play, 18 yard touchdown drive for the Hornets. And the crowd into it. And we've got a three point game and the defense feeling good about themselves here for the Hornets. They've made a couple of stops since that opening drive into the second half. And so Wisdom Nazidi in the special teams unit out for the Hornets to make a play. I mentioned on the last drive, the defense 
needed to make a play, get a turnover, do something to give the offense a short field. Well, the special teams made it happen. And so we've got a 10 to seven ball game. Hornets trying to snap the losing streak. They haven't won since the last game of the 2015 season when they beat Howard. Nazidi sends the kick away. It's a short kick. It'll be fielded by Bishop at the 20-yard line, and he'll go down at about the 30. And a player injured for Norfolk State. It's number 84, Chuma Owana, and we've seen a lot of him in this second half, so this would not be good if Owana's injury is too much for him to return, but he will get up and limp off on his own power. And so now the Hornet defense making their way out onto the field, playing with good old Mo on their side. The momentum favoring the Hornets right now. And again, just underway here in the fourth quarter. And now it's about finishing for this Hornets football team. Carter in the shotgun. Taylor goes in motion. Carter will roll out to his right. He'll find Taylor underneath. Taylor's going to pick up about 10 yards, but we've got a flag in the area of holding. Holding on number 66, Taro Lipscomb, the offensive lineman for Norfolk State. And so it's a 10-yard penalty, and the momentum keeps going the Hornets' way. Now it'll be first and 20 for Norfolk State. And so the Hornets defense trying to make something happen. Carter. It's a broken play. Hornets jumped offside. Carter throws it deep, and it's intercepted. That's number 20, Taewon Selby, and he will step out of bounds at the 25-yard line. But again, I don't think it's going to matter. It should be coming back on an offsides. So it's offsides on the Hornets, so the interception negated. And that's a smart play there by Juwan Carter. Uh, it's a free play. The worst thing that happens is it's intercepted and you get the ball back and you take a shot downfield. If your man catches it, then you get a big play in a big game. And if you watch the NFL game at all, you see Aaron Rodgers, one of the best in the league at doing that. He tells his center, somebody jumps offsides, snap it. The worst thing that will happen is we get five yards. And Rogers great at taking advantage of that. And Juwan Carter and the Spartans taking advantage of it here. Refs come together. Caleb Ebron, the man called for the penalty. So that'll make it first and 15. And so Norfolk State made the mistake committing the holding on first down. And the Hornets give him five of those yards back with the offsides penalty. So it'll be first and 15. Juwan Carter again in the shotgun. He's got Aaron Savage next to him. Marcus Taylor on the bottom of your screen right there on the left side. And they'll throw it to him on the screen and Taylor can't come up with it. Taylor bobbled it, and the hit was delivered by Devin Smith, jarring it loose. And so that'll make it third and 16. Good aggressiveness there from Smith to get after Taylor as soon as the ball was snapped. And he was able to meet him nearly simultaneously with the football. Jar it loose. And so it's second and 15 now. It's second and 15, ball on the 25-yard line. Carter again in the shotgun. Savage alongside. 
Carter will drop back, looking right, looking down the field. Got a man. This one caught two Hornets, run into each other. It's Wahi. He's got it down to the 45, breaks the tackle, and inside Hornets territory. George Wahi made the catch, cut up field, and two Hornets ran into each other trying to tackle him. And then further downfield, poor tackling. Wahi ran a man over and goes into Hornets territory, and now Norfolk State going quickly. Carter fakes the hand off to Savage, over the middle to his tight end. Number 89, Anthony Williams down inside the 20. And that's the second or third time that Norfolk State has gotten the Hornets with the quick play action and the strike up the seam to their tight end. And just like that, it was second and 15 deep in Norfolk State territory. And two plays later, the Hornets backed up inside their own 20. Carter will take the snap, fake the handoff. Dumps it underneath to Bishop. Bishop spins off with Tackler. He'll fall forward to about the nine yard line. And that will be close to a first down. And so it is good enough for a first down. That'll make it first and goal from the nine yard line. And so Norfolk State been nickeling and diming the Hornets for much of this game today, or excuse me, on this drive though. A couple of big plays resulting in a big drive here for Norfolk State and now we've got an injury timeout. Player for the Hornets on the back end down on a knee in the end zone. State. Ball on the Hornet nine yard line. Jared Jihad Niebauer, the injured player for the Hornets. Norfolk State back out on offense. Two backs in the backfield with Carter. Carter going to take off and run with it. And he's brought down at the six yard line. Good open field tackle by number 40, Garfield Heslop. Carter likely would have got that down around the two yard line at least for Norfolk State had Heslop not made that tackle. And so it's gonna be second and goal from about the six yard line. Norfolk State continuing to rely on the passing game. Carter making things happen out of the backfield. He's got Savage alongside of him. We'll see if they try and go to the ground here. They play action it. Carter trying to go to a man, throwing to the back of the end zone, nearly intercepted, but it's knocked away. And we've got a flag here in the backfield. So the penalty, it's a holding on Norfolk State, so that will bring the ball back to the 16-yard line. 
and they will replay second down. So second and 16 now. Second and goal from the 16. North Folk State again trying to make it a two possession game. Up 10 to 7 right now. Carter takes the snap, looking to his right. He'll throw to the end zone. He's got a man. It's caught. Touchdown, North Folk State. Number 84, Chuma Awana, who was hurt on the kickoff for this drive. Gets up and apparently feeling a little better, and certainly now with some adrenaline going, makes the easy touchdown grab and puts Norfolk State back on top by 10. Well, nine, pending the extra point. And Carter, this is just an easy pitch and catch up the right side. Nobody there. And the extra point is up, and it is good. And so Norfolk State back on top, 17 to seven. And Delaware State once again with work to do, and it's getting later and later in the ball game. A six play, 70 yard drive, taking up three minutes and 23 seconds. And so the Spartans back up by 10 with 11 minutes and 25 seconds remaining. Here in quarter number four, and the Hornets gonna have to go quickly now. Uh, the offense has sputtered for much of the game. Their only touchdown came on a drive that started at their Spartan 18 yard line. Bo Lomax on to kick it away for the Spartans. Bryce and Aline back deep, ready to field. He took one back earlier, called back on a holding. He'll field this one at about the six yard line. Turns it upfield, now will cut up the middle and brought down at about the 19 yard line. And so now crunch time for the offense. You've lost the momentum. Down 10 points. And you've got to make something happen. Get yourself back within a possession. But Norfolk State has not yet shown the ability in this game to consistently run the football. And so that will make it more difficult to run the clock out. McDaniels, quick pass out to the left. And this one hits the turf, it's incomplete. Pass intended for number 21, Jordan Hanna. So right around 11 minutes left to go in the ball game. 17 to seven the score, McDaniels in the shotgun. Bryson Aline alongside of him. McDaniels, throw out to the right to Juan Selby, to Ron Selby, excuse me, makes the catch. And it's good enough for a first down, down to the 30 yard line. And so we will see what Jack McDaniels can do now under the gun 
his first home game at Alumni Stadium. And facing a 10-point deficit in the fourth quarter, trying to get something going. He'll step up, avoids a rusher. Finds Godinay over the middle. Godinay makes a man miss and falls forward to the Norfolk State 48-yard line. Great play there by Jack McDaniels, the freshman. Felt the pressure, stepped up in the pocket, and delivers a strike over the middle. Godinay with the catch. And a first down. Hornets starting to move the football now. McDaniels again avoiding the rush. It was Chris Lee coming up the middle, throws over the right side, and it's knocked away by number two, Aaron Chandler. McDaniels just a little bit late on the throw. If he'd have got that off about a half second sooner, he probably finds his man and gets close to a first down. Instead, Chandler gets there and knocks it away. And so that'll bring up second and 10. Two backs, three receivers with McDaniels. McDaniels steps up, dumps it off to the right side. It's caught by number 41, Giovanni Downey. And Downey grabs about five yards, so that'll bring up third and five. Ball at the Spartan 42, and you've got to wonder if they don't get it here, do they consider going for it? This late in the game, down a distance is manageable, and we've got a timeout. Or maybe not. An inadvertent whistle. So they will reset the game clock. Three receivers wide. Two backs in the backfield. McDaniels drops back again, looking left. Dumps it to Aline. Aline makes the catch. He's got the first down, down to the 31-yard line. McDaniels looking left to his receivers on the left side. Nobody there. Dumps it to Aline. And Aline, plenty of room to run in front. Gets the first down and then some. And so the Hornet drive continues here as we near the halfway point in the fourth quarter. Down 10 points. McDaniels in the shotgun. Drops back again, looking deep down the left side. It's knocked away. He fumbles it. Picks it up. They'll call it an incomplete pass. Looked like his arm was going forward and just got knocked away and sent backwards. And so a good call there from the officials. So second and 10. Another two back, three receiver set for the Hornets. McDaniels again dropping back, looking right, looking right. He's got pressure on his blind side. It's going to be a hold. And McDaniels nowhere to go. He's going to be brought down for a loss of about three yards. And so now curious as to whether the holding call, it's going to be a holding on the left tackle. And, and now we've got some extracurricular activities, punches thrown. And it is getting chippy here at Alumni Stadium. And I think you might get an ejection or two here. It looked like somebody Threw a punch, and he will. Tavion Blackwell for the Norfolk State Spartans will be thrown out of this game. He threw a punch. You could see it, and he will be walked off the field. He will be thrown out of this one, and now you're going to have holding during the play, and we will get at least an unsportsmanlike conduct following the play. So if you get two penalties during the play, the penalty's offset, and they replay the down. Because one occurred during the play, they will assess it. And then you have the penalty after the play, so they will then assess that. After the play, 
Unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 72. Unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 99. Number 99 is disqualified from the contest. So they call the unsportsmanlike conduct on Tavion Blackwell. They also call it on number 72, Joshua Fala. Fala not ejected, did not throw a punch. Blackwell, you see there, being escorted off the field. He has been ejected. So the Hornets trying to get themselves back in this game, trying to get this to fire them up. But it will be second and 20, so a long way to go in this. On this set of downs right now just to get a first down. And so things getting chippy, things getting intense here late in the game. Norfolk State up by 10. So the referees have appear to have everything sorted out. And so the game clock is wound and we are back to work here. Hornets in the pistol, Bryson and Aline in the back. McDaniels dropping back, pressure again. And McDaniels goes down, it's number 92, Deshaun Dixon with a speed rush around the edge. And McDaniels just no time in the pocket. And that will lose a few more yards. So it will be third down and 26 now for the Hornets. And they can get themselves back into the field goal range without getting a first down. But they're going to need to get at least two between the 35 and 30 yard line to give Nazidi a chance. They'll dump it out to Aline. Aline's got it. Cuts back to the middle of the field. And he'll go to about the 36 yard line. It would be a 53-yarder from here. And Nazidi's got a good leg. We mentioned he hasn't missed all year, but he hasn't attempted anything close to this range yet this season, as long as attempt a 26-yarder. And so now 7-13 to go in the fourth quarter. It's fourth and 16 from the Spartan 37 yard line. And so the Hornets will go for it. McDaniels drops back, gets pressure up the middle, steps away, throws over the middle and it's knocked away. And there's a flag on the play. It was knocked away by Bobby Price. And curious to see what the call is. I didn't think there was pass interference, but maybe an illegal contact we will see. The referee disagrees. Bobby Price called for the pass interference. And that's going to be an automatic first down. And so both teams now beginning to bail each other out with the penalties. And it looked like a clean pass breakup from up here, but the referees have the better angle, and they get paid the money, and I don't. So we'll take their word for it. And the Hornets will certainly take it. Under seven minutes to go in the ball game now. McDaniels the handoff to Aline. Aline up the right sideline, grabs a couple of yards at it about the 20. It'll be second and seven. Six and a half minutes to go in the ballgame. Hornets down by ten, trying to get themselves back within 
one possession. They're certainly in field goal range for Nazidi now, but after everything that's happened on this drive, unsportsmanlike conduct penalties, Blackwell was thrown out as they hand it to Aline. Aline goes down to the 15 yard line. And then on fourth and 16, they get a pass interference penalty that bails them out, gives them the first down. Uh, they certainly want to take advantage of this and get themselves six points. But it's third and three now, ball at the 15 yard line. McDaniels again with a lean in the backfield. Three receivers and one tight end. Got an A, goes in motion. Keep your eye on him. A great play by McDaniels. They dump it out. It's a first down. Number 92, Deshaun Dixon had great pressure on the play. Was right in Jack McDaniels' face when he went to make the pass. And McDaniels lobbed it over top of him. It was complete. It's a first down, and it's first and goal now to about the seven-yard line. And after just three points scored in the entire first half, looking for our 28th point of the second half here. Hornets inside the 10, play clock inside of five. McDaniels gets the snap, fakes it, rolling right, got a man in the back of the end zone, it's intercepted! Bobby Price, the man who was called for the pass interference earlier, Makes the interception, but we've got a flag and it's going to be against the Hornets. Ineligible man downfield is the call. And so Jack McDaniels was his third interception of the game. Will cost the Hornets dearly. And the freshman trying to make the play over the middle. And it was picked off. And so Bobby Price, he was the man called for the pass interference earlier in the drive that awarded the Hornets a first down on fourth and 16. There he makes a big play, and that may have clinched this one. Still four minutes and 50 seconds to go in the game. Hornets with two timeouts remaining, but it has certainly become a much steeper climb. And off to Aaron Savage. Savage cuts up field, gets across the 20, down to about the 25-yard line. Aaron Savage on the carry. Second down, North Fork State. And so the clock continuing to tick away inside of four and a half minutes remaining now. And we mentioned in Norfolk State has not ran the ball a lot successfully today, but they haven't tried to. They've really thrown it a lot, really taken advantage of the soft coverage that the Hornets have employed for much of the day. And now trying to employ their four-minute offense and run this clock out and not give the ball back to the Hornets. Carter under center, hand off to Savage again. Well, some Hornets in the backfield, but Savage going the other way. Gets the carry, picks up another five yards, and that's good enough for a first down. And that will keep the clock ticking. And so the Hornets really felt optimistic coming into this one, felt like this was going to be one of their best opportunities to pick up a win facing a fellow freshman quarterback. And Juwan Carter, you have to give him credit, he's been spectacular today, throwing the ball over 40 times. Not very often you see a freshman quarterback at this level throwing over 40 times, but he has. He's been mistake-free. He's thrown a touchdown pass. And really, his mistake-free game compared to McDaniels' three interceptions has been the difference in this one. And now Aaron Savage beginning to wear down this Hornet defense. And a little bit more pushing and shoving going on after the snap. And Savage continuing to wear down this Hornet defense. Picks up another six yards as we're down to three minutes to go in the ball game. And again, Juwan Carter, the freshman's mistake-free game has been the difference so far. And 
So Juwan Carter again under center, hands it off to Savage again, and Savage continuing to just bob and, bob and weave his way forward a few yards at a time. He'll pick up a couple, and he'll make it about third and two, third and a long two. As the clock continues to tick away, and you have to start to wonder when Coach Carter is going to start using those timeouts. And just as I ask the question, he answers it. A timeout here and probably a smart Smart call is you're inside of three minutes, so really you can't afford to wait much longer. And now you've got a third down, so you've given yourself an opportunity to make a stop, call another timeout, and get the ball back. But again, it is certainly an uphill climb and a steep one at that from here. And so... Looking at this game, the Hornets will certainly look at a couple of penalties that cost them. You go back to the Bryson Aline kick return. He scored a touchdown, and it was called back on an illegal block in the back. Hornets didn't score on that possession. Uh, they've cost themselves multiple opportunities with penalties in this one. And, and of course, Jack McDaniels' three turnovers. Uh, two of them coming in the red zone. And so the Hornets make the stop on third down. They'll stop Savage short of the first down as we've got just over two minutes remaining. Two minutes and eight seconds left in the ball game. Hornets will stop the clock. And so now Delaware State out of timeouts. Norfolk State likely will punt it away back here to the Hornets. And taking a look at the upcoming schedule for the Hornets, just four home games this season for Delaware State. They played their first three on the road, as we mentioned. Uh, and then today and then next week is a bye week for them. And then October the 7th, they're back in action at North Carolina A&T. And October 14th, the next time the Hornets will be in action here at Alumni Stadium. That's homecoming against the Bison of Howard. And if you haven't heard about Howard yet, we will – Give you a little bit of a, a preview as this game gets closer and closer to the end. Hornets trying to make something happen on the punt return. I believe that's Godin A. Godin A and Aline were both back to return it, and it was Godin A who got it. Tried to make something happen, but not enough help from his blockers. And so one minute, 56 seconds remaining, and it's going to take quite a miracle, quite a couple of plays for the Hornets to pull this one out. But again, certainly the three turnovers, two of them coming in scoring territory for Delaware State. And you've got to think, McDaniels on the first drive, the opening drive, throwing that interception, that probably cost the Hornets at least three points. And then down here in the red zone, inside the five yard line, another one Probably cost them a touchdown. Just like that, it's 10 points. That's the difference in the game right now. McDaniels in the backfield trying to make something happen. It's tipped away, caught by an offensive lineman, and he will lose a yard. They were better off to just have that one fall incomplete. It would have stopped the clock. And instead, clock keeps ticking. Hornets go quickly. McDaniels looking deep down the right sideline for Selby, and it's just out of his reach. Incomplete. That'll bring up third down for the Hornets. And so as we mentioned, October 14th, the next time the Hornets will be at home, and that is homecoming weekend. They will take on the Bison from Howard. Howard pulled off one of the biggest upsets in the history of college football earlier this year when they upset UNLV. And uh, if you haven't heard, Cam Newton's little brother is the starting quarterback for Howard. And so Delaware State certainly with their work cut out for him as the season will continue to go on. This one thrown over the middle incomplete. Looking for Kawan Kali. And so fourth and 10, this is the ball game. The Hornets cannot convert 
here. They will turn it over on downs, and likely a couple of kneel downs will be the end of the football game. And so a frustrating home opener to Jack McDaniels' career. All in all, he played pretty solid. And here looking for West out of the backfield and just an uninspired effort from this football team on that drive. Uh, certainly feeling like this game was over when they got the football. But uh, again, McDaniels just a frustrating opener to his career here at Alumni Stadium. Uh, you certainly saw some bright spots. You see what they like in his game. Uh, he's got a good arm. He's got to find some consistency and has to learn that uh, when the play's not there to be made, don't try and make it. Um, and that cost him a couple of times. The defense bailed him out once when he turned it over in their own territory. But you get those growing pains from a freshman quarterback. None from Juwan Carter today, though. The freshman for Norfolk State, uh, again, a mistake-free football game. Did not throw an interception today. Threw the touchdown pass that pretty much sealed the deal. Put Norfolk State up 17-7. to And after the interception by Jack McDaniels, and at number seven, Bobby Price in the end zone. That was pretty much it. So one more kneel down here. We'll do it, Carter under center. Inside of 50 seconds remaining, play clock down to 13. So once the game clock is inside of 40 seconds, Norfolk State will snap it and that will do it. And so there it is. The Norfolk State Spartans will come in to Dover, Delaware at Alumni Stadium and pick up the 17-7 win. Things got a little chippy. Things got hotly contested late in this football game. The Hornets had their opportunities, unable to take advantage. You got to give credit to Coach Latrell Scott drawing up a solid game plan for his offense. They did a great job putting Jawan Carter in positions where he could succeed. And... The wide receivers for Norfolk State came up big as well. Marcus Taylor had some big plays. My, why he had some big plays as well. And so it all results in a Norfolk State 17-7 win here on Hall of Fame Day. All of us here at WDSU-TV want to wish a congratulations to all of the 2017 Hall of Fame class for the Delaware State Athletics. And we look forward to seeing you next time on WDSU-TV. The Hornets fall 17-7 to of the Norfolk State Spartans. I'm Chris Moore for all of us here at WDSU-TV. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you back on October, October 14th when the Hornets take on the Howard Bison. Have a good night, everybody.